Hi guys, it's Sherry. Today we are going to be playing around with some of our cutters. And these are the ornament cutters. Now I am not going to be doing them as ornaments. I want to show you how you can take these cutters and make them for everyday wear earrings. So I have this beautiful stamp and I really like the design for what I want to do with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some of my white clay here and some of my black. And I'm going to do two different styles here. So I'm going to roll out my white here. And I'm going to roll my black out as well. And I'm going to roll these out onto my thickest setting on my pasta machine. First, I want to get them nice and smooth so they go through my pasta machine easy. And this black clay has been sitting here for a little while, so it's a little harder to work with. So let me condition my stuff, roll it out, and I'll be right back. Okay. So first, I'm going to do my um, stamp on my white and I am just going to press down onto it make sure that it's in position so it doesn't move on me and then I'll take my roller and I'll put some good pressure on there I want to get some really good impressions in there, so I'm going to press hard on this. And look how deep and beautiful. So I'll lift that up. Do the same thing to my black. And I really just want to show you guys that you could take any stamp and do this technique, even with something that's supposed to be Christmas ornaments. I like creating my pieces for year round or for an entire season, not just a holiday. Um, I love being able to wear my stuff or if you sell it, a lot of people want to wear their stuff more than, you know, for a week. So doing something like this gives them the impression that it's a Christmas ornament, but it's also something that they can wear all year. Now look how gorgeous that looks. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I am going to be taking some of my powders from the um, gem line. So there's four of those that I'm going to be using. And I am also going to be using some alcohol inks. And I am also going to be using some of my metal leaf. So lots and lots of different things are going to use today between the two of these. So now the first thing I want to do is decide which metal leaf I want to use. And I want to go with something a little bit different. All right, so I have a couple of these ones. So let's go with one of these because that is really neat. All right. Put that off to the side for right this second. So we are going to start with the black first. Let me get my black clay loose here. So I need to put it in the middle so I can work with it a little bit easier. And I'm just going to put, and I'm hoping that this is just going to stay right on the top.
And I don't want to press too hard because I don't want to mush my design. So I'm hoping by doing a light rub, it kind of stays on most of it. And I don't want it on all of it, just most of it. Okay. Now I'm going to press down on this and then I'll start seeing my design. That looks super cool. <coughs> Came at Add it a little bit more than I really want it. <laughs> that stuck that a lot faster than I thought it was. I thought it was going to tear up in little pieces, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that I could get this down into all those little crevices now. And at the same time, I want to try to break it up a little bit. All right. Since this got a little bit more than I want it. I'm going to show you how to fix that. I am going to take my stamp once again and I'm going to line it up the best that I can. First I got to decide or find out what side I actually used and it shouldn't be too difficult. This one right here, right there. I just want to match that particular one up and that will tell me where I did it. So I'm going to press this in again and I'm hoping that will break everything up for me. Hold it all into place and then rub it down. And you see how it's breaking up? Now I'm just going to take some of this and just take a little bit off. So I'm going to break that up. And all I'm doing right now, because I got so much of this leaf on, is just taking a small layer of the top off. Now remember, I want most of this on here. So I don't want to do too much. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Now I'll start putting my mica powders on and I'm going to start with my green here. And I'm just going to put these in different areas. Okay. So I'm not going to, um, do all the same color everywhere, just a little bit. And please remember that even if you think you mess up a project, you could turn it into something else. So I didn't want all that on there. I really wanted this to kind of be popped out like that. But unfortunately, my stuff stuck down. So now I'm going to change my idea just slightly and make it more of a flat look than I would have um, initially wanted to do. And this mica powder is not going to stick to your gold leaf. 
So you can go right over it and it will come off. I absolutely love all the colors of this gold leaf. And these mica powders, oh, they're stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Look how gorgeous this purple is. Oh, so, so beautiful. And I love blending all these colors together. You don't think initially that it's going to work out but I'm telling you when you add stuff together it turns it into something absolutely beautiful I am big on doing mixed medias and um, add in different things to than I normally would just to see what I come out with and it's normally just it just comes out so stunning All right. So my next step is to get my clean brush. I like to take my big brush and just clean everything off. Take all the extra mica powder off. All that extra leaf. I'll use some extra color there. And once you brush it, you'll see if you need to add more color. So I want a little bit more red. So my red didn't show up as bright as I wanted it to. All right, gorgeous. That is absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna lift that up so you can really see how pretty that looks all together. Look at that. And it looks like a little mess right now, but it's, it, it's just gonna look stunning, I'm telling you. So now I'm going to pick out little areas. And I want to try to get some stuff that's similar. Because I like to have these particular earrings close um, to being the same. This one's really cool. All right. Okay. I'm going to go wash my hands quick and then we're going to add our little gems. Okay, so I have these gems here and I chose these because they're all really colorful. So let me, oops. So I don't know if you can see how they're not clear. They have like a really pretty rainbow effect to them. So I thought this would look really nice with these particular um, earrings. So I have my little wax 
pencil here. And then I'm just going to, let's design this a little bit different. Let's see here. Let me get each one by itself, each set by themselves, I should say, and see exactly how I would like to create these. So first I will clean up my edges because I like to clean everything up so I don't have to sand them down afterwards. And you can see how nice these cutters are because there's not a lot to clean up. So now those are my two matching ones. And then I can see how I would like to design these. So here I just naturally have like little dots there. So I'm just going to follow those. Now these are heat seal. So once they're in the oven, they'll bake right onto the piece and stay on. Oops. Come on. And let's follow this one. Now, obviously my gems are gonna be slightly different on each one because the design is different. So that's what we have for that set. Okay. So that's what I have for those two. So I'm gonna decorate the rest. Okay, so I got those ones done. I went in a straight line down on those ones. I kind of spread the rest all around. So now I'm gonna put these in my oven at 275 for a half hour. And then we'll start working on this one. Let me get all these right in my oven. So now this one, I want to do something a little bit different. And I want to do my alcohol ink on this one. So the first thing I'm going to start with is my yellow. And I'm just going to dab these in different areas. And just watch them spread throughout the piece. Then I'm gonna go with red. And I'm gonna keep these separated for now the best that I can. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted the um, stamp to be really deep. This way I could really kind of just play around and design this the way that I want it to go. I'm going to do a little um, metallic gold copper. Now remember, when you're doing the metallic ones, shake them really well. Oops. I dropped where I did not want it to go. I'm gonna take my paintbrush. This is the one that I used my mica powder on and I'm okay with that. And I'm just gonna spread the metallic one right around. Cause this kind of just lays on top. So spreading it really will get it into 
all those indents and help it go where you want it to go. It's not like the regular alcohol ink. It doesn't spread as easy, I guess you could say, on dry clay that is. So I wanna kinda spread that a little bit. And now I'm just gonna kinda paint with this a bit. Spread it around. I'm trying not to touch my yellow too much because the yellow is going to smear and get muddy looking. So I don't want to touch that too much right now. And I'm going to do my purplish red. And this is a metallic one as well. Let's get in. I'm gonna take my brush again. And I'm not rinsing anything out. I'm just spreading it. All right, now I'm gonna add some white in different area. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do my white yet. I am going to do, where are you? Right here, let's go with purple. Very carefully dab that in. And at this point, you're just going to add it to where you don't have too much of the other colors. Don't worry about if you get this into the yellow at this point. Because we're not going to have a lot of yellow showing up. I just want a tiny bit here and there. I'm actually going to go right over that yellow because I feel like that yellow doesn't belong in this. So now let's just go over. Just lightly go over the whole thing together. And this will help blend all your colors nicely together. You see how beautiful that turns out? Using a paintbrush with your alcohol ink really is a excellent idea because you have more control over it. I mean, look how stunning that looks. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white here and there. I need to make sure my it's coming out white. Yep. So just do white. And that's going to help change some of the colors. Now, where's my... I'm just going to get my paper here. And I'm going to start blotting up some of that.
And now I'm gonna get a dry baby wipe. And this will really just soak up anything extra. And look how beautiful. Now you can see if you wanna add more colors. And I want a little bit more purple up here because I love that purple, but we'll have a lot. See how the light purple and dark purple from adding that white blend it so beautiful together, but we don't have a lot of purple. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of purple. Just go over the top a little bit a little bit and I'm gonna add a little bit of scarlet red and I'm gonna keep playing with this till I get exactly what I want and I just want little highlights of colors So just take those and get your highlights. Beautiful. Okay, lastly, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the copper, but this time I'm gonna put my copper on my table here and I'm going to add it exactly where I want it because I just want a little here and a little there just to kind of give it a little bit of highlight see right on the top of it I'm not pushing it into anything this is just kind of going to highlight those higher points here All right, and I am happy with that. I think that looks gorgeous. Very, very pleased with that. And now I'm gonna get my cutters again. I like this one because you can make it into basically anything that you want. It doesn't have to be an ornament. It could be a little vase if you wanted it to be. I'm gonna go right above it because the colors are similar. And be careful when you're cutting on something like this because sometimes it's hard to see where the other piece is and you don't wanna cut into each other. And I'm kind of going to different areas because I'm looking for similar designs to incorporate in each one. I'm finding a hard time looking for that. So I'm just going to go right next to it. I love these designs on here. They're so deep and beautiful. Look how gorgeous all these look. I think I cut into that one. I did slightly. I slightly cut into that one, so I'm going to redo that one on this piece. Which one was it? This one right here. Look how beautiful. I love these. And I love that I am able to wear these all year. And I don't have to wear them as ornaments. Because truly... You can make them into anything, and that's what I love about this. Okay, so these ones I am going to leave just the way they are. I'm not going to add anything extra to them. Um, towards the end, I may add something. Actually, you know what? Let me do something. Okay, so 
I am actually going to take my palette here. Um, this is like, this is mica powder. And I am actually going to put some silver on. And the reason I'm going to do silver is because I really feel like that is going to make this pop. I love doing all the different colors and then doing one bright color to make the whole thing just jump out at you. So I'm just going to carefully go right over with my silver. And then you'll see all those beautiful colors underneath. And let's try a gold. Let's see how the gold looks. Oh, that's so beautiful. It honestly looks like real gold. That is stunning. This is beautiful. I love this palette. So now I gotta find the matchies. And that one is where? Oh, right there and there. How come I got three of these? Oh, that's the broken one. <laughs> that's funny. So I did one gold and one silver. What a dummy. What a dummy. Oh, you can't even tell that. Hmm. I wonder if I could do another, if I have enough for another one. Let's see. Is it this one? No. Nope. So close. Can we push these together? Let's see. Can we push these together and make them stay? It is the question. Nope. Actually, we could glue it. Let's do some bacon bonds. Bacon bonds. And go over that with gold. Okay, do some more silver. All right, guys, so now I am going to put these all in my oven, 275, because it is my Primo clay. I'm going to bake them for a full half hour, and then we'll come back and see what these beautiful pieces look like. My pieces are out of the oven. I did jump ahead a little bit, guys, so you wouldn't have to sit here and watch me do every single piece. All right, so my pieces, nope, okay. My pieces are out of the oven. I did jump ahead a little bit, guys, so you wouldn't have to sit here and watch me do every single piece, but I want to show you um, each step until we're done with the complete piece. So I kind of separated things. So these I have finished, but I will show you those last. And I am using resin on my pieces. So these two... Um, I have not completed. What I ended up doing was I ended up painting each one gold on the back. And then afterwards I realized that I did some of them silver. So I didn't like having the gold and silver together. So what I ended up doing was I took <clears throat> my chrome marker, my chrome paint marker, and I did the sides and the back. So I will show you that step on here. So you just take your chrome marker and I love these um, markers. They are fantastic. This one especially, this is my favorite. It dries quickly. It doesn't remain sticky. Um, you don't always have to coat it with a sealer. I absolutely love this one over all of them. Um, I also have these ones. 
These at times take forever to dry and it's a 50-50 shot if it's going to remain sticky. So if I have to recommend one of the top ones that I absolutely love, it is going to be this particular one. Um, they're all good, don't get me wrong, it just depends on the job, but this is the one that I always go to because it does dry super fast and it does not remain sticky to the touch. So I ended up, let me get my little tool here. I just ended up taking the sides, doing the sides, and then I will go over the entire back. And I ended up doing two coats because sometimes when you're going over it, it doesn't cover the entire um, piece right away. It kind of leaves like a streaky mark. So if it does the streaky mark, Let's go over it twice. Let it dry and then go over it. So this I'm going to put off to the side and let that dry. And then I'll do a second coat on the back. This one is done ahead of time for you guys. The next step that after you're done doing all your sides, whether it's gold, silver. Now I did do these ones in gold and it took, I did not seal the sides. But it took a good, I say, 24 hours for them to not be sticky anymore. Um, and that's because I used the um, Let's Resin Chrome Markers. And that brand, for some reason, seems to stay sticky a lot longer and doesn't dry as quick as the other brand. But like I said, they're both very, very good. Um, I love the J Diction resin. This is... The, my number one go-to now. I also really, really like, um, oh, what is it called? Um, the Pandora one. That's a brush on resin. Absolutely love that one. It's fantastic. But for this particular job, I do want something that is going to give me more of a dome look, and that's where this comes into play. So I'm going to get my little stick here. And I just pour this right on. I'll take my tool and then I just spread my resin right over. Make sure I get into all those little areas. Get right to the edge. And I absolutely love this one because it stays to the edge. Some of them pull and they want to kind of puddle in the middle. This particular resin does not do that to me. Um, I find it to cure fast and it stays where I put it and I just, this is my favorite, this is my go-to. And I have not noticed any yellowing yet, so um, I will continue using this one. But that is all you have to do with that. Then I take my lighter over it make sure no bubbles are there which I usually do not have an issue and now I'll put this under my UV light while that cures I'll show you the next step and that is drilling our holes so these ones are already resin this one I did decide to keep the gold and then I just edged the backs of them I want to do something a little bit different with these particular ones I want to see how I like to mix uh, metals I love the look of mixed metals but I did prefer the silver over the gold but I wanted to see how I like it when it's all finished so I chose to put my fish hooks in I like to flip these upside down because sometimes they're a little hard to find exactly where the middle is when you have detail in the um, cutter or detail on the earring itself so I'm just going to go right here, find my middle, put my drill straight down, and then I'm going to hold and press and just go straight, and it will go right through. And it is that simple. You can go through the other side, make sure it's a nice clean hole. And now I have a beautiful hole right in the middle to put my jump ring in. So once again, find your middle. 
straight up, press down, hold your earring in place, and drill. If you do not hold your earring down, your earring will go in circles like that. If you do not hold your um, drill, it's going to slip. You're going to be drilling into a piece that is constantly slipping. Um, so you need to make sure you're holding it straight down in place and hold your earring so your piece does not move on you, okay? And a lot of people asking me how to make sure your piece doesn't move or slip. That is how you do it. Take your jump ring. Open it up. Put it in your hole. I use the fish hooks. I don't like to put a second jump ring on, so I take the loop down at the bottom. I will hold my earring in place and then turn it. Do it slowly, otherwise you will snap your piece off and then your earring is no good. So you can adjust it. And the only reason I do this is because I don't want to have to put on multiple jump rings. If you don't want to turn your piece, just put on another jump ring and then your earring will fall into place the proper way. Take your two pliers and then just reclose them. If you're having problems closing them to straight, take your uh, pliers and then just move your plier back and forth like this and your earring, or your jump ring, I'm sorry, will naturally close properly. So once again, open, put it in the hole, take your fish hook, Slowly turn. Make sure this part that is going into your ear faces the back of your earring so you know it lays properly. Take your pliers and then close them. And that is all to it. Now, what I ended up doing with these ones, and these are my favorite, I absolutely love these. I ended up resining them, obviously. Um, I resined all my pieces. But what I absolutely love is I put glitter on the back of each one of these. And I just thought it really brought each piece to life. It made it fun. You can see these ones I did not. They're not as pretty, but I still love them. I just thought the glitter really brought them out. So I want to show you how to do that quickly before I end this video. So this is the piece that I just resin. It is completely cured. I'm going to go onto the back here. I'm going to do a different color because I thought this one would match the front a little bit better because it has like a little purple pink. Take a little container, and this is actually just a, <laughs> this is like a ketchup container thing that I got. Um, they're useful because you could just throw them away when you're done. All I did was I added a little bit of resin inside. And then I scooped some glitter in there. And I do do a, I do put a lot of glitter in there because I really want this to, um, the, I want the glitter to take over the piece, really. I will mix it up. And you'll see this beautiful pink purple look. And then I will just put that on there. And I'm going to spread it. And I put this on pretty thick.
And this glitter works really, really nice because it's like extra fine. So it works perfect. If you're going to cover it like this, you will not have to make sure that the back is painted perfect. That's a really nice thing about putting glitter on the back. So like these, it was a thicker glitter. So you can see some of the back. I used this particular one. It was more chunky. This one, you can see it is covering most of that back. So here you can see that I didn't do a beautiful job on that. Well, that's okay because now I'm going to take this glitter and I'm going to go right over it. right down to the edges. Go over it with my lighter one time. And now I'll put these under my UV light as well. And while those are finishing up, I will show you the end results of these ones. So look how beautiful the silver and just the gold came out. I'm going to find two of the same shapes. So here. So here you can kind of see the difference between the silver and the gold. And how it just makes the pieces look slightly different. But very, very classy. I love how classy these are. They're not um, Christmassy. Like these are supposed to be Christmas bulbs, but you can make this cutter into a classy earring. And that was the main purpose of me doing this video was to show you, you could take different cutters and turn them into something else. Now, with the gold, I did end up put in this particular Let's Resin Chrome Marker on the top because my mica powder did not come out as bright as I wanted it to. So I just added the gold um, marker on top to really make it pop. But these ones really truly are my favorite. Look at those colors. Like, let me just show you this particular one. Look at the colors in that. How gorgeous is that? I love all these colors. That metal leaf really brought all those colors to this piece. And then the mica powder with the blue and the purples really helped it. And then, of course, we have our little gemstones in there. And then the back, I love the back. This particular glitter came in one of those Create Along boxes. So I'm not sure if she sells this separately, but a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Absolutely love this. So that is our beautiful, colorful ones. I mean, look at how many beautiful ones we made. Just gorgeous there. And then I ended up doing a bunch of the gold, which I love. So let me show you the difference here. So you see how this is the metal leaf and the mica powder, and that is the alcohol ink. And you can see the difference with that. So if you want something that shows more detail into the um, rubber stamp that we used, go with this particular style. If you want something that just really shows and pops all the colors, go with this particular style. Let me check on those. So these are complete. Look how beautiful. I 
mean, how beautiful is that? So, of course, I did not resin the top of this one yet, but that will be the back, and that is the front. So, beautiful, beautiful. You could do so many things, and I really, really hope that you enjoyed creating these pieces with me. If you want, please share with me your creations at... Um, on my Facebook page at Share Bears Gifts, Palmer Clay Community and Mixed Media. I would love to see what you guys are creating. And once again, as always, please like, comment, share, and get me out in the YouTube world. And I love you guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you all next time. Bye.